Welcome to the aggressive life. I don't know why I say that so aggressively. I just knows that just now they're welcome to the aggressive. I could say, I could say, welcome to the aggressive <laughs> life. Welcome. I don't think that fits. Uh, no, it doesn't. Today we're talking about Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. What a great place. It's a great place. Remember that old commercial? You probably don't. You're too young. I do not remember that old commercial. All right. Well, let me tell you something, Dirt. 1980, nearly 20% of the United States population had served in the military. Probably in 1950, I don't know what it was, it was probably 50% or something like that. In the 40 years since then, that number has dropped significantly down to about 6.5% today. For too many of us, Veterans Affairs uh, could just become a, a headline we read about. Too few of us know actual veterans who have, or who have taken the time to hear their stories. That changes today. Today, we're talking to a man who served his country, and he found a way to continue to serve even after his time in the military. His name is Mike Crosley, known to me as Michael or Gabby. We'll get into that in just a moment. For eight years, Cros, as he's known by most people, that's his nickname he gave himself. You know me. No, you can't give yourself your own nickname. No, you can't. But he gave it to himself, and other people call him Cros. For eight years, Cros was in the Marine Corps doing just about every badass thing that you could think of. He graduated from the Amphibious Reconnaissance Course, Airborne School, Dive School, Military Freefall School, and served in the first Gulf War. After his active duty service, Service. He spent time in the security and advisory world with lots of man hours in Iraq, Afghanistan, and abroad. He landed back to the States in 2011. That's about when I met him, and he's since become the site director for Base Camp, 400 plus acres in rural Southwest Ohio, where man camp, vet camp, couples camp, woman camp, man daughter camp, gerbil camp, all these camps, <laughs> all of them that are life changing off the grid <laughs> camping experiences happen through. Throughout the year. Stop laughing. It's my introduction. Stand down, Marine. Stand <laughs> down. He's an incredibly impressive man. He's got stuff I, I've wanted to get him to talk about. I said, no, man, I can't talk about that. Are you sure? I'm like, no, we can't talk. Please. So we'll see. We'll see if I get him talking. He's up for welcome to the aggressive life. Mike Crosley, known as Cross, known as Gabby. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to be with you. People are always going, where do you get your nicknames? Well, people would not know this one because uh, you and I had a, a hunting trip together. What was that, two years ago? Two, three years ago. Three yeah. years ago? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you remember that hunting camp, hunting trip? Oh, man. I remember uh, pulling your truck out of the snow. Yeah. I remember uh, the Red Fox. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember... Uh, Talking too much and getting the nickname <laughs> of Gabby. Yeah, <laughs> that was, I always thought you were some quiet guy, and like you get out in the wild, all of a sudden, wow, this guy actually does talk. He talks yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's it's that fresh air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good. It's wonderful. That's <laughs> uh, good. So I know that you uh, you bleed America, you bleed veteran, you bleed uh, just the military, all of that stuff. So hey, man, thank you so much for your service to the military. Thank you for your service to all of us, because anybody who served in the military has served all of us. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I always feel when I thank somebody, equal parts gratitude and then equal part tinge of regret that I didn't personally serve myself. Do you think other guys feel that way? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hear that a lot. A lot of people think, or a lot of dudes especially, feel like it was a void, uh, don't know why. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody, uh, man, a lot of years ago who thanked me for my service and then immediately went into this, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a scumbag. I didn't serve. I just went to college. I said, well, I looked at this individual who had, for lack of better terms, just a great civilian, you know, serves his people, serves his community, pays his taxes. And I looked at him and said, man, you've done what a, a military veteran would like to see. Civilians have to serve, too. You got people that go overseas. You got people that stay here. People that stay here got to serve too. Yeah, I wonder if we didn't accidentally enjoy a level of unity in our country because everyone served in World War II or they served the war effort back home or they were drafted or a family member was. There was this, there was this common bond, a common experience 
that Americans had, and we don't have this anymore. There's there's virtually nothing somebody has in common who lives in the Ivy League or someplace in New England with someone who's a good old boy in the red dirt of Georgia. There's mm. virtually there's nothing, nothing in common. And uh, we're not even talking about the tech world or any of that stuff. I think if I was king for a day, king of America for a day, I would only want to do one thing, mandatory service. Yeah, I agree. For two years. Yep, I agree. And it wouldn't be because, hey, we need more people in the military. In fact, if you don't think you can kill somebody, then you could do the Peace Corps either yeah, way. Yeah. But you have two years where you have to interact with other people who aren't like you, and you have to have a common experience. Maybe we'd fight less with one another. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, the military definitely, uh, or service, it, it puts you in uh, the, the room with all sorts of different people, different looks, different smells, different accents different skill sets. It forces you to be accountable to yourself. It forces you to be accountable to your teammates. It gives you uh, a different view of the world other than our <laughs> comfortable little world that we live in now. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, just on the service side and the sacrifice side, it gives somebody or uh, instills that quality in somebody for sure. Why did you choose the Marines versus other branches? Uh, luck of the draw. I was, uh, when I joined, um, it, it wasn't a thought. I didn't grow up saying, I'm going to, I'm joining the Marine Corps. Um, I ran into a recruiter. I was in a bad place in my life. And that recruiter was a Marine Corps recruiter. And it, it just happened. It just happened. When I joined, I wasn't running towards service, towards the Marine Corps. It was, it was my out. I was running away from the life that I had at the time. There, there are a lot of hurting misfit folks who find their way in the military. Yeah, absolutely. And then come out okay, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Why yeah. is that, you think? Yeah, well, I, I would say community. Service puts you in an environment where everything's stripped down, you know, from your hair to what you wear. You're all put on an equal plane and expected to work together. The sense of team, the sense of knowing your place and knowing that it matters, and then knowing that the things you can't do are going to be taken care of by your teammates. Yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, team or what we know now in civilian world, community. You know, it's just so important. Well, I was one of those guys like you. I was running away. Mm -hmm. I toyed with the Marines and, oh, gosh, was real close to signing, was doing the recruiting office, all that stuff, um, because I didn't, really want, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I, and I was running away from the narrative my parents were giving me, which was college. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in my story so much. But I do remember when they talked about, uh, the recruiter talked about that. He would show pictures and said, look at all these guys. They all got high and tights. They're all wearing the same clothes. We strip you down. Everyone's equal here. No matter what your skin color, background, how much money you make, whatever. Everyone goes to boot camp. Everyone's equal. That really applied to me. Yeah. That was yeah. cool. Appealed to me, rather. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I remember my platoon, and when I went to boot camp, I had... Frank Smith, Mike Crosses, I had Ninja Medines, I had Fashion, I had teammates that were from the inner city of Oakland, I had teammates that were from the country. It just, you name it, we were all there together and we were all equal. So, what are your lessons that you learned coming out of the military? Is there anything that where you reflect on and think, well, these things I really took away from my time and they've, they've still stayed with me to this day? Yeah, there's, there's a ton of things that I took away from the military that I should have left. And over the years, I've learned to leave those. But the things that definitely are applicable are um, uh, what I look at or, or how I view team, how I view my teammates and how I view my place in the team. The, the sense of that people rely on me to get things done in a timely matter. Um, <laughs> a lot of those good teammates uh, still sit in my head. Yeah, I, uh, it, I learned, you name it, I learned A to Z. I learned how to sew. I learned how to I was part of the, the, the era of Marines that we hand washed our uniforms and, and pressed them ourselves. So I learned how to self care and I had learned how to care for others. I learned intimacy at its, at its deepest level. I'm not, nothing weird, nothing weird, but uh, when you're surrounded by dudes that look at you in the eye and say, I'm ready to die for you, and you know it, that's, uh, that's a, a pretty deep intimacy. And uh, that's, that's probably the most beautiful thing about the service. I mean, the skill sets, all the neat things that I did, those aren't, those aren't 
aren't there anymore, you know. Um, but the the lesson learned about relationship and being accountable to myself and accountable to my teammates is probably the most important lesson that I learned in the service. And it's it, it's to the core of how I operate today, uh, especially the last few years being involved in camps is that there was two places in my life that I hear things like honor and being accountable and being in community and, and being on mission. I learned that in the military, and then I hear it in ministry at the church. You know, they're very similar, very similar. You know, I, I hear people all the time say, oh, you know, like you often, we're at war, you know, in the church sometimes, we're at war, we have these battles. Uh, I don't and, say we're at war. Yeah, uh, I've heard, uh, I, I've I guess, heard yeah. people use that. I think, I, think, I think people play it up too much. Yeah, you know? I, I do, but. There is conflict and there's war. I think, I think we just, I think, <laughs> I'll let you finish your point. No, I, th- I think that preacher types overuse the war metaphor. And I think veterans who've actually been in physical war. I think that it, I don't know. I, I, I got you. Got to be real careful with that. You're going to talk about a war. You were in war, and, and you can't do ten push-ups, and you can't remember the last time you were cold, and you can't remember the last time you were hungry, and and you. You know, it's just like, come on. I mean, yeah. if, if you're actually doing those things, okay, but just be careful the metaphors, unless you're actually living it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's also looking at it the lens from like a lot of people when they hear the word war, they think bombs, guns, yeah. blood. You know. Uh, it's a little more intimate than that, you know. There, even even as a civilian, sometimes I feel like, oh yeah, I'm at war. You know, in, in the military, there was psychological operations, a way to get in somebody's head and 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 battle them that way. Man, I feel that as a civilian, you know, the battle of the heart, battle of the mind, battle of doing what's right. You know, vice sometimes what I want to do. Yeah, you know. So there there is a type of war in the world post military for sure. Yeah, for me. Yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah. I just think people in churches play it up too much yeah. as, as a sermon totally. point. Totally. It, it is a war. Biblically speaking, it is a war. There's a conflict. There's an enemy that's out to get us. Yep. Jesus says the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. I I just think some people play it up a bit too much yep. based on the way they're not living. Yeah. Just my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And, and vets too often go, uh, they get disenchanted. Like, oh, that's stupid. You can't be talking like that. Like, right. You know, so Exactly. Yeah. When you came back, what was your process of uh, PTSD? Did you have PTSD when you came back? I, I did. Didn't even know it. Yeah, when I came back, I thought that uh, I was disillusioned. I thought that, you know, I did all this great things. I had all this great training. I had all this development. I knew how to lead. Um, now I'm going to go kick the world in the butt. I landed here. And I really had to learn how to transition from what I knew, pick out what's applicable to now, and then the applicable to the now, how to actually live and operate in that space. You know, the way I talk, my posture, the way I ask for things, the, the, the transitional piece. It wasn't so much the things that I did. It was more the psychological transitions. It was the stakes are high in the service. You know, people think, oh, if you don't do your job, you're going to die. You know, I had a problem in my transition thinking, oh, life's not the same. The stakes aren't high. You know, life's just kind of boring. Um, you know, what right. I do doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I had some transitional issues. I got in a little uh, uh, altercation at work. And instead of getting a you know, launched, you know, you guys gave me, you gave me grace. And I went and saw a therapist and sure enough, man, I was, I was battling with, with PTSD. There was things in my brain that had just been boxed up and they just flopped around in my brain and they just made, they made my life no sense. And I was, and I just wasn't man enough to face it. I don't remember the altercation. It was a physical altercation. It, it, it was a threat. Yeah. It was a threat. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. See, I, I forgive so well, I forget. <laughs> I don't even remember the things because I'm so much like God. Yeah, that, that's yeah, the way it is. Yeah, 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 you are. Yeah, you totally are. Right, totally, <laughs> yeah, totally, you totally right, are. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you run that base camp property that we do all that stuff for, and you and you also help me with my hunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Help each other, man. <laughs> Great friend yeah. who's uh, who's laid out more corn that I've bought than I ever thought was possible in my <laughs> life. And is that like a is that like a huge step down for you, or is it a good respite for you, given the stress and pressure that you had in PTSD? Is it a oh, this is the rhythm I need for the rest of my life kind of thing? It's just how do you how do you process that as far as a the trajectory of your life? 
Well, the speed for my life is is whatever that day gives me. You know, I I don't dictate the speed of my life. I just dictate my outlook on life. You know, I um uh, being out of base camp, being isolated most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 good for me. The hard work that I have to do while I'm isolated, the physical activity, the chopping wood, fix it, all the things that I have to do. Absolutely, it's good for me. Just like anybody, you know, anybody that like yourself, you PT, and you see the benefits both physically and mentally. Yeah. Same with me. Uh, the job itself, man. Yeah, I I think I did maybe at first. Now that you asked, yeah, I, I maybe I don't think I looked at it as like, oh, it's below me. Uh, but I I definitely think that it was. And maybe less than you know what I've done in my past, um, but now no, it's 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 equal to or greater than for sure. A lot of the 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 good disciplines that I have identified for my service are totally applicable to to what I do. You know, I've I've got to work hard. I've got to push through when when I don't feel like taking another step or doing what I got to push through. Yeah. I know how to do that. When I get my volunteers around me or my posse or my team, man, I would, I had a work party this Saturday. I had some dudes out there chopping wood. I had a conversation with the guy and I was like, man, this is just like my platoon yeah. in the Marine Corps. That's cool. Which as a vet, I, I miss jumping out of planes from 30 plus thousand feet. And I miss my, my community, my brothers, my tribe. I don't miss haircuts. I don't miss, I don't miss any of the other things, but I miss community. But out there at base camp, I get, I get community like equal to or greater than what I had. What's yeah. the percentage of people who come out of the military who have PTSD right now? I don't know. I, I would imagine that whatever percentage is, is documented somewhere is probably not right. I'm sure it's higher. You know, I'm sure that there's a ton of dudes out there or men and women that are suffering that just don't even talk about it. And is there a common trigger for the PTSD? Is it like you kill somebody, you're just afraid the bombs are going to fall on you at any moment and the uncertainty? Is the is, is there a through line through everybody's PTSD experience? Uh, n no, I, I think it, it, it affects us different. Um, for me, every once in a while, I have uh, pretty heavy dreams, um, but I know how to work through those when they when those dreams wake wake me up. There's certain dates on the calendar where I've lost, you know, really good friends. Heavy but, dreams, like you're killing people. Or you're no, killed, no, or what's... no. Uh, most of my heavy dreams are uh, in the form of something's going to happen to me personally, and I, I can't, I can't fend it. Or I, and I usually I wake up like, ooh, real aggressive, mm -hmm. <laughs> real loud. Ooh, wake up. That's, yeah. It's it's never it's never the other way. It's, I'm I'm in trouble and, and I can't I can't get out of it. Yeah. Every once in a while, um, when I go under overpass. I, I get taken back to a uh, time in my life where we would have to worry if you went under, uh, in, especially in Iraq in, in early, uh, early 2000s when I was there, we'd go under an overpass and one of the techniques that the bad guys would use is they'd be waiting on the other side and they'd drop hand grenades or some sort of explosive munition on top of your car. So our, our, our fix for that was you'd come in on one side as soon as you get under that overpass you, you pull hard right and try to come out in a different trajectory so that they can't guess where you're coming out. So, yeah, every once in a while, I'll hit a, hit a underneath a, an overpass, and I'll, I won't actually swerve the car, but I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. Um, yeah. The fix for that in our house is my wife drives for us a lot whenever we're together. You know? yeah, I remember coming back uh – our hunting trip from Colorado, uh, you want a 512 to drive because yep. you're like, man, I don't, I don't, yep. I don't like driving. So yep. it's still, uh, yep. that aspect is still with you. Yep, yep, yep. Um, boy, there for a while before I, before I uh, sat down with a therapist for a couple years, uh, every time a trash can would hit the ground, boy, I would, I would light up. My BPM would go up so high. So and you ask the question, are you over it? I, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think I'll ever be over it. I'm at the point now where some of those those milestones in my life that just really affected my brain, I want to latch on to, but I but I've learned to latch on to them in a healthy way. You know, the the men that that uh, that I've lost, you know, I don't want to be comfortable with their death. I don't want to, oh yeah, he's great. He's done. you know, just like my dad, my dad passed away when I was 16. 
I don't ever want to look at that moment and just be like super comfortable because that was just a heavy, heavy loss in my life. But I faced it and dealt with it and learned the techniques that, that get me through those, those times when I could dip really, really low and I come out of it real quick and I've got a community around me. I've got dudes around me that uh, I can call anytime and say, Hey man, I'm feeling really cruddy about this and talk through it, talk through it, share your story. That's, that's if, if we're trying to get to a point, share your story. It, people have, you cannot box that. Anybody who's going through any type of traumatic thing in their brain, whether their grandmother died, they got blown. You got to talk about it. Can't box it up. How can we support the veterans we bump into? Because most of us, as a t- statistics show, have not served in the military. But we bump into folks who are in the military, like saying thank you for your service. Is that appreciated or do or is that something that people just I've heard that before it doesn't mean much anymore well, yeah. what, how can we how can we support folks like you whenever somebody thanks me I yeah I appreciate it a lot I, I do yeah Any, I I would bet anybody this is oh, I don't appreciate that there there's an issue I think they appreciate it it's it maybe some pride there yeah. that they need to work on um I don't know ask a vet tell me you know don't, don't leave it at um Thank you for your service. What'd you do? What was your job? You know, what was your rate? What was your MOS? Some of the questions you're asking me, what did you learn? You know, um, uh, understand them. I, and, and, but then also I think a vet needs to, uh, we tend to put up this, this tough, especially us males, we tend to put up this tough guy facade. I think I even do it sometimes, you know, at 54, I think I still do it. It's also a vet's responsibility to let somebody into their life if somebody is offering up that you know if you can't just box up you got to join in the conversation you got to share your story you got to share your life because you're probably going to teach something to somebody if you do yeah so ask a vet get to know them i think uh judd said something one time he said cross is just misunderstood and i was like oh whoa okay so i think vets are just misunderstood and it goes both ways Listen to a vet, and if you're a vet, share your story. Today's podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens. It's a product I use every day. I started taking AG1 because I don't watch my diet too closely, but I know that I'm getting all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients I can, as well as hydrating with 12 ounces of water right off the bat at the beginning of the day. One scoop of AG1, it's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, and it doesn't taste like it. It actually tastes great. AG1 is a micro habit with big benefits. For less than $3 a day, you can take care of your health and invest in your future. It's recommended by professional athletes, health experts, and me. <laughs> To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash aggressive life. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash aggressive life to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. So go get you some. And let's get back to the show. So you've got a huge passion for vet camp. You're a driver behind that. Tell us what happens at vet camp. Well, at least what you can tell yeah. us, because I know it happens at vet camp stays at vet camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, vet, vet camp. And this is male vets, right? It is male vets. Yeah, when we started this four years ago, we decided that it's just for the experience to maximize the time that we can together. It's It's got to be you know, a, a male vet camp. Because you guys and, are all going to be naked together and, and yeah, march, in, march it, in formation through the woods. Oh, that yeah, kind of totally, stuff, yeah. yeah. Our American flag speedos. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, however, I'm, I'm connected with uh, a couple of female vets, and it looks like we're going to do a female uh, vet camp pilot this summer. Great. So, so I've yeah. got a woman to send you because I just got an email from another v- female vet who's like, when's this going to happen? When? And so I'll, I'll forward it on to them yes, see if they want to be part yes, of the team. Yeah, if anybody's Perfect. out there, I'm michael.crossley at crossroads.net. If you're a female vet and you want to be involved in in female vet camp, please. For yeah. When we started four years ago, I said, okay, we got to be ready to support the women because we're going right. to be asked. And I was asked immediately. And I said, awesome. 
I need you to step up and, and lead it. And it's taken four years, but I think I finally found somebody to lead it. So, yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah. people always think it's a great idea for someone else to do. Totally. You should do this. You should do totally. this. I'm like, totally. You understand all these camps started because somebody said, I'm going to make that happen. Yep. Yep. So, uh, you know, you and I are both men. We're not going to make female vet camp happen. Nope. But nope. it's awesome to hear that there's some people who have risen up and we're yep. going to support that. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, we've got the template. We've got the team to support it. So, but uh, Man Vet Camp, yeah, we started it four years ago and um, it was actually a push from uh, uh, another vet, Chris, a buddy of mine that's got it because I've been out at base camp now for six, seven years. Um, and I just didn't want to put the energy in it because my, my day job is is so busy. Right. And he kept pushing and pushing, and I was like, yeah, you're right. We got to do it. So we started it four years ago. Four of us vets put it together, and it's low and slow. There's no yellow feet. We're not going to make you stand. Eh, we might make you stand at attention once when we, when we uh, bring out the colors, but it's not heavy PT. We're not going to give you a log to, to, to run around with. <laughs> it's, it's not a HUA camp. It's, it's, it's super chill. We completely built it around the idea of giving vets what I hear vets miss all the time, and it's their community. It's their brothers. It's, it's amazing. You go out there, and you hear somebody say, Korea, and there's 10 dudes that already know what that guy's about because they've been to Korea. You know, there's a common language. We speak in acronyms. Uh, we just have our own way, it seems, of, of communicating, and vet camp is a place to just be with your team, just with your allies. We're all allies. One of the really interesting things that you did about vet camp because I'm not I'm not a vet, so I don't I really don't get it. I'm happy to support it, but I don't get it. As I thought, wait, a minute, if it's all men, what's the difference between that and man camp? Obviously, there's a common experience that not all men at man camp have. But then, one of the things that really moves me is, uh, you know, man camp. It's hey, you show up between this time and this time, and come in with your unit, and then you leave, and all that stuff. It's kind of meandering in and out. Once you're there, it's all in. The whole time, everybody's one, but there's a little bit of flexibility when you come and go, but not not vet camp. No, no, we are we stick to good old military traditions. We start together, we end together. We don't leave anyone behind. We move as, as, as fast as our slowest man. Um, everybody marches in together. Everybody, we march in together. If, uh, if you can't carry your pack, I'll carry it. If I can't carry it, somebody else will. Um, if we don't feel like carrying packs... We put it on the tractor. I said, it is, it is all low about- Low and slow. I low like and slow. Yep, yep. No man left behind. Start together. Leave together. But the thing that I noticed about vets, like, immediately is immediately I, I saw this divide between two. There was the veterans that had been or had seen combat or had been to a combat zone, and there was vets that, that had not. They, they served their country. And just weren't there at the at the proper time or at the right time or their job didn't have them go to combat zone. I see I have seen a lot of those types just not feel worthy of being a vet. Mm. That's that is such BS. <laughs> if you're one of the 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 ones that joined the service, you served. If you served, you were a vet. If you served and you were a vet, you deserve this pat on the back. You deserve to be honored for what you did and, and continue to do if you've been able to take some of that good stuff away and bring it into your life now. Vet camp is to celebrate men that served and hopefully this summer, women that served. You know, period. Not, what, not where you served, not how you served, whether you had a pen, whether you had a... I don't care. You served your country. You need to come to vet camp. Yeah. Yeah, period. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. That's yeah. good. So you said this recently. I want to have you expound on it, if you don't mind. You say, the last 10 years of my previous career, I was in charge. I was the, quote, leader. I believe one of the reasons God brought me here was to relearn how to follow well. The Marine Corps taught me this. When you're in charge, eat last and die first. And when you're not in charge, be the one you want to lead. Hmm. Followership. So it's like everyone talks about leadership, want to be a good leader. No one's talking about followers. Followership. That's basically what you're talking about here, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you get a, you know, you get an organization. There's 100 people there. There's only one person ultimately in charge. So that means there's 99 people that got to execute the mission that that person is 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 deemed important for that day or for that week or whatever period of time. That was probably one of my 
biggest transitional issues was thinking that I was the man, you know, then where I go next, I get to be the man again. And it's God. And you're not dumb. You got a master's. Yeah. yeah master's in, yeah, in, yeah. in uh, and, uh, terrorism studies from a. <laughs> <laughs> you have a legitimate master's in terrorism studies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, why would you possibly have nightmares? I don't know why you would have nightmares. Oh, I know, honey. Honey, I know what I'm going to get a degree in terrorism studies. And why do I have. Why do I have nightmares? I can't. I, I don't know. Imagine why. Knowledge is horror. <laughs> Knowledge is horror. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah. So you're know, obviously a very competent, capable, capable guy, and and uh, yeah, you're following some people that sometimes don't appear to be that way, and yet you're still choosing to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, when it's your job to follow, you, you, it doesn't mean you follow with. And this isn't me guessing. This is me. This. Because I used to be this person, you know, it's, someone tells me what to do. And if I didn't agree with it, you know, yeah, I would do it. But it just grumble, you know, not a good space. And, yeah, I'd get the job done, but I wasn't happy. And it just, I don't even remember when, but it, uh, I think it was when I started this vet camp. Uh, it, it seemed to be a bit of a, tr a struggle. I was reminded that lesson of the Marine Corps. It's like, yeah, when you're put in charge, it's like, you're the one in charge. You've been you've been identified as the one in charge. So it's your job to set the pace. If there's five meals there and you got a team of four people, huh, it's your responsibility to go without. You got to set the pace. But if you're not in charge, man, I love that line. Be the one you want to lead. So if I happen to not be in charge, I want the way I operate and the way I work to for lack of a better word, be a joy to that person who's, who's, who's in charge. Because that's what I would want. When I'm in charge, mm -hmm. I want the people that are working for me or working under me yes. to do the same thing, yep. you know? So if I want people to do it, I need to do it. You know, it's sometimes you got to do the right thing just because it's the right thing. Exactly. That's super important, man. Yeah. Michael, are you ready for the lightning round? This one, ask you something, and you answer fast. Like, whoosh, whoosh. Okay. I okay. know I know you're Gabby, so yeah. you're going to have to turn it down. You've done really well. You've done, uh, done uh, really, really well. But this is like lightning fast. Okay. Response. Are you ready? Okay. All right, here we go. A must-have when you're out camping. Headlamp. Why should a listener check out a Crossroads camp? Oh, stretch yourself. Man, any, anytime you do anything that perhaps might add a little adversity to your life. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing better than going through adversity with a group of people and coming out on the other end. You will never remember the bad times. You're, you're saying, making it sound like it's going to be hell if you go to Crossroads Camp. It's adversity. It's hell. It's going to be awful. You're going to pay <laughs> to suffer. It, it's also fun. Oh, it's, yeah, oh, it's, it's a also fun. Oh, yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, as a PTSD guy, you can only see the negative because you're terrorist <laughs> studies. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be hell. We're gonna, terrorists are going to come out to Neville, Ohio and just... Uh, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> hey, we got a great water slide out there. Yeah, we do. It's, yeah, it's getting it's better. Awesome. I, I do yeah. like it. Yeah. Your favorite memory of vet camp so far? Mm-hmm. Uh, I had somebody uh, this last vet camp tell me that the words that I spoke the year before changed him in his relationship and his outlook um, with his, I believe, now fiance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. It's nice to know that you can say some things and change somebody's lives. Best piece of wisdom you learned from your time in the service? Work hard. Work hard. Be, be a good teammate. Be a good teammate. You, uh, you had that emotional time a bit earlier. How often do those come when you think about your old teammates? Uh, you, about February and March usually are, are heavy months for me. I, had, uh, I wasn't there, but I had a, a sergeant major friend of mine die in Iraq in 2004, February of 2004. And then uh, in March, pretty significant date where I lost a teammate, and I was actually right there. And uh, was it, I've had lots of teammates along the way, but this was just one of those guys that was um, – I, I owe him my life. I owe my life. Oh, wow. I do. I do. Yeah. And he's not here with us anymore. So, does, so yeah. Does everybody, when they see somebody die for the first time in front of them, does that rock everybody or are there good people? I mean, healthy people. I don't mean mentally deranged people who have psychopathic tendencies, but I mean, you know, normal people like me or dirt. Like, yeah. 
Does that does it rock everybody the first time, or, yeah. or are some people are able to go like, huh? But that sucks. But I move on with my life. Yeah, I've I've only seen one person the, of the people that I've seen get rocked. Um, I've seen one person that it appeared to not affect them. I've never seen it not affect anybody. Hmm. It'd be a pretty scary thing if something like that did not affect you. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, you, uh, you wonder. You know, are you? How, how would I respond? I hope I never have to respond. But I'm around death a lot. There's just not a bullet involved. Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. But it's tough. And the one thing I like about it, it sounds really awful when I say like, I've come to actually like funerals. I know it sounds really sick. Like not, ooh, today I get to go to a funeral. But when I go to one, when I'm there, I think, this is really healthy for my soul. Because everything in our world is trying to numb us out and strip away our humanity and keep us from seeing eternal realities. And when you go to a funeral, you go, yeah, I'm going to die. Everyone is going to die. And are the choices of my life lining up with what I once said to me at my funeral? And are they setting me up mm -hmm. for the life that I believe is going to happen to me after death? Mm -hmm. Because our world just doesn't want us to think that. It's just think immediate. Yeah. Think this quarter. Think this month. Think mm -hmm. this day. Think you're in your 20s. Think in your 50s. Whatever it is. It's it's go, go, go. You, you, you. Have, have, have. Achieve, achieve, achieve. Experience, experience, experience. And funerals help me, help elevate me up out of it. Yeah. I yeah. like even feel, I even like yeah. feeling sad. I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm feeling because our world tries to make me not feel. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I remember Mike Hip's funeral was a huge reset in my life. You know, a huge like, oh man, you know, there's because you know, he was much older than I am, and um, it was just a, a good look at what's valuable in life, what's important, how to re, you know, wh where your priorities need to lie. Yeah, you know, and they're not in the 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 wins, the things that I've. I've got to do. They're the relationships. They're the people around you. you know, they're the people that you're going to look towards you, that you're going to look for when, when things are shitty for yourself, you yes. know? So that's real important to remember that, you know? Well, is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't talked about? Man, if you're interested and want to get connected with uh, any of our camps, uh, go to crossroads.net slash camps. Everything you need is there. Um, you can also go to crossroads.net slash man veteran camp. And uh, sign up for Vet Camp. I want to meet you. I want to hear your story. Brother, if someone wants to follow up with you, uh, see what's going on with you, do you, do you do anything like social media? This is basically your time to advertise yourself if you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if you want to follow me uh, and, and, and maybe be number 51 or 52, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am, what am I, Cross OTG? And I uh, actually started that to help promote Vet Camp. And now there is uh, C R O Z. Yes, yeah, C R O Z O T G. For Off the Grid. Yep, Off right. the Grid. Yep, that's an Instagram. And then uh, there's Man Veteran Camp. Is um, You can find us on Instagram at my Man Veteran Camp. And uh, I do my best to, to uh, promote Vet Camp on that platform. Um, but if. You know, there's social media platforms, and they're great. And if you want general knowledge and, you know, a, a quick shot of hua, you know, please do that. But if you got a, a question, a concern, yeah, go ahead and email me at Michael. Oh, you're Crossley. excited about this, aren't you? Well, no, I, I am, uh, but I also know what, what that could mean. So. You don't have to do that. You have to go that far. But if you want to, go ahead. Yeah, Michael.Crossley, C-R-O-S-S-L-E-Y, at Crossroads.net. And I'll answer any question you have about Vet Camp and uh, get you connected with the uh, community if you want. Man, thanks for being a good friend. Thanks for helping me nail a big buck this last year. That was fun. Thanks for doing a great job on the camp uh, property. Thank you for thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for how you are allowing what God's done in your life and the things that you've experienced to be poured out in other men. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. Super honored. Super honored. So I don't know what you want to take from this today. Maybe you're going to be more sensitized to how you interact with people who have served. That would be great. Maybe you're somebody who served and you realize, oh, man, I'm feeling a little bit of a, 
emotional, spiritual drag, maybe I need to talk to somebody. That would be great. Maybe you're thinking, hey, I need to try this vet camp or man camp or woman camp or one of these things just to just to clear my head. Great. I hope you found something today that you can put to work in your life. Make the move. Improve your life. Get closer with God. We'll see you next time on The Aggressive Life. Hey, thanks for listening. For all things aggressive living, why don't you head over to bryantome.com. Find my new book, Move, a guide to get up and go forward, as well as articles and much, much more. And no matter where you listen to podcasts, why don't you take a second and leave us a rating, leave us a review. It really, really helps us drive new listeners to the show. We want to help as many people as possible, just like we may have helped you. We want to help others. So why don't you help us out? And if you want to connect, find me on Instagram, at Brian Tome. Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio.